Hey guys, it's Somber Shadow 9 back at it again with the video games and back at it again with Destiny 2. Man, it has been a little while. I know there was a bunch of new reveals that recently came out. Uh, I wanted to wait a little bit until the day that Season of the Drifter, aka Joker's Wild, came out. And that is today. Uh, so let's unpack stuff. Of course, there's a Vidoc. I'm not going to play the whole thing because it's like eight minutes long. There's a bunch of other trailers as well. I just kind of want to go through all the little things that we have here. You know, new game modes, new content, the raised power level, exotics, which we don't really know much about currently. And, of course, Thorn, uh, new pinnacle weapons, all that jazz that comes with this new season. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I guess the first thing we need to talk about is that this whole DLC centers around Gambit. Uh, completely, utterly Gambit. So if you don't like Gambit, I'm sorry, but you're going to have to suck it up. But no, there is a completely new mode called Gambit Prime. It's basically replacing Trials of the Nine. Not entirely, but it's pretty much there. It's replacing Trials of the Nine for now, considering that it ended up getting scrapped because they tried to put it back in. So there's that. The next thing, of course, you know, about Gambit Prime is that it's competitive it's one round so there's really more of a race to get uh to the primeval and to kill the boss and everything that you really need to do i do not know if the meatball spawns there for malfeasance uh it could but i have no idea so basically all of your other stuff you got you can do so it's one round it's there's more hard rolls than soft rolls they kind of based gambit around the four soft rolls that we kind of all know and they made them into actual roles, and they've named them. So we have the Reaper, who kills as many things as possible. You have the Collector, who collects all of the moats. You have the Sentry, who kills all of the taken enemies, such as blockers, and the enemies that protect the primeval in order to you, for you to do more damage. And then you have the Invader, who goes to the other side and kills the enemy and tries to stop their progress as much as possible. And basically what they have done is they've centered different armor around these with different perks. Now, I don't know these perks personally. I know they released them, but I legitimately cannot remember them off the top of my head. I'll put them on the screen right about now if that's a thing. But, you know, they're, it's very interesting. So each is kind of tailored to your own thing. It doesn't matter which one you choose. You can have a full team of invaders or a full team of centuries it's it's interesting so each of them has kind of like a little armor thing a bunch of new gambit weapons they mentioned a lot of legendaries there weren't really any mentioning of exotics in the vidoc at the time which i was kind of worried about because we got five exotics i believe we got five anyway we got five exotics from black armory that being le monarch Jotun, izanagi's burden anarchy and last word so that's everything we've kind of gotten and this one there are also five exotics so now we're going to move into the exotics perfect transition so the exotics here of course we know about thorn we've known about thorn for a long 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 time i didn't really make a video on it because the last word was out at that time but yeah we knew the thorn was here that's the big one and that's not going to be available until next week so thank god they're not waiting a full like two and a half months to put it out although it wasn't that long but it, it was a very long time it was a month considering that actually no basically two months because it came out at the beginning of december and it didn't come out to the end of january january 29th was when the last word came out so yeah it's kind of a big gap that people were really upset about but now we're going to get it second week we don't know anything about it what they're reworking what they're keeping all we know is it's probably going to do poison damage, and it sounds exactly the same when it fires, which is good. But the other thing is we have an unnamed exotic quest. We don't know what the exotic is, so that'd be interesting. A lot of people have been saying it's the rose, the thorn's counter. The English is hard. The thorn's counterpart, but I, uh, I don't think they would do it that early. I know we've never had the thorn. I would take that with a or never had the thorn. I know we never had the rose. It's been mentioned a lot, but I remember seeing the leaker there and on the 9 saying that the Rose was going to be coming in Penumbra, and so far he's been right about everything. So I'm kind of believing him a little bit more, but again, he could be wrong, so I don't know. Maybe it is the Rose. That'd be pretty cool, because it's an exotic we never had, we've only really heard about. 
But the other thing is, of course, there are armor pieces, one for each class. Uh, I will put up the names right now because I cannot bother to remember them off the top of my head. I do know what they do. So the Hunters is an arc melee. If you do an arc melee and you do a, like a follow-up, then it does more damage and heals you. Or if you get hit by a melee attack and then hit them back, which is very cool. I thought that was cool. The Warlock was you consume your grenade to create an arc soul, like a more powerful arc soul that you would have on your like storm collar. And um, yeah, which will gun everything down, which I remember we saw in an old Forsaken trailer, I believe, but it never was a thing. It never panned out. And then the Titan has to do with also, I believe, melee attacks as well. It might be more damage. I don't exactly remember. I do know it has a chance to heal you. Oh, now I remember. It has to do with a sword. It's blocking, so holding block with a sword no longer consumes ammo when you have that armor perk on, which is actually pretty good. That's really good. And then if you block an attack at the precise time, it will have the chance to heal you, which is actually pretty interesting. I like that. Uh, I, of course, I'll put up the names, um, but those are the armor pieces, and there's one other weapon that we do know about, and it is called the Arbalest, I believe. Feel free to fact check me on that. It's called the Arbalest. So, I don't know if you remember, a long time ago, there was a Vidoc that had to do with Annual Pass, but it was kind of about Forsaken at the time. They mentioned stuff that had to do with Annual Pass, and they showed, you know, concept art that they were making. And, of course, they showed the sniper rifle that we all know, Izanagi's Burden. But... In the top, like, right corner, it was really small. People were able to catch it. It said exotic railgun. And people were very interested. Well, here it is. The exotic railgun is the Arbolester. Yeah, Arbolester. Thank you. Uh, I don't know who I said thank you to. But the Arbolester. Um, it is a kinetic linear fusion rifle. So basically think, like, Queensbreaker or sleeper simulant and it's that in kinetic form it doesn't do a lot of damage all i know it, about the perk is that it does more damage to elemental shields so it sounds like it's more of a pve oriented thing rather than a pvp it is interesting having a kinetic linear fusion rifle is never really a thought so it's basically a railgun if you can see the design which i'll put up right now it there is like a bullet sitting there and it looks like there's two rails there that kind of propel it through. So it's actually pretty interesting. I remember at the beginning, no one really knew what it was. Actually, someone called that it was an exotic. Many people thought it was just the other weapons because it kind of matched the theme. But they did say it looked unique basically because of the symbol on the on the magazine and or the piping on the side, which makes sense. Um, it's very interesting. I, I think it's a cool idea and we'll see what pans out when people get it. But there's that. Of course, there's a new activity called The Reckoning that goes hand-in-hand -hand with Gambit Prime. So that's how you get your Gambit Prime armor. You get it from playing... You get it from playing Reckoning. So Reckoning is basically you go inside that giant rock that the, that the Drifter has hanging off the end of his ship. And it turns out it transports you to... Or teleports, I should say. Into a open area that has to do with the nine uh it looks like the trials area it's not but it's like the realm of the nine and you have to kill enemies in a timer so far only tier one is active there is a tier two and a tier three they'll be active over time but basically you have to it's like a cycle you do gambit prime reckoning will be open to you you do reckoning you get your armor you go back to gambit prime and you just keep going and i think that's really cool it's kind of awesome i think it's a cool idea Hopefully it'll pan out. It's kind of like a mini dungeon that everyone knows where it is. It's kind of like the Shattered Throne in Forsaken where you got, you know, Wish Ender and all that. So it's actually pretty cool. I like that. It's a, it's a cool idea. I'm for, for someone who personally doesn't like Gambit, it is fun. It does sound pretty cool, and I am very interested. Of course, we got new Pinnacle weapons. So we got your Crucible, your Gambit, and your Vanguard. Your Crucible is called the Recluse. It's a submachine gun. So basically getting kills with other weapons gives this weapon, makes this weapon do more damage, which is dumb. I don't know why the Crucible weapons are like the most overpowered things. Because you had Luna's Howl. You had a Mountaintop, which was a kinetic grenade launcher that shot straight at you. 
I, I don't know what else they can do. It's, it's, it's nuts. Of course, we have the Oxygen SR3 for the Vanguard. So this has to do with Dragonfly. So the more precision hits you get, the bigger your Dragonfly kill is going to be. The explosion, more or less, it's going to be bigger, which I think is cool. And then you have 21% Delirium, which is a heavy machine gun, which more or less, it's basically Rampage. The more kills you get, the more damage it does. That's what it says. Um, I'm guessing that's pretty much Rampage. It might be a specific perk, or it might work differently. It also is, like, the fastest firing machine gun, I believe, in game. So it's very interesting. I, I feel like, you know, you choose which one you want to chase. Honestly, I kind of want to chase the Recluse more than more than the 21% Delirium. Honestly, I'm definitely not going to go for the Oxygen SR3. I feel like I'm not going to go for it. That's That's not really a weapon that I personally like. But it is interesting. There's also cool little tidbits that we have. So we know that when Thorn comes out, there's going to be something called an Allegiance quest where you choose either the Vanguard or the Drifter side. And it's once per character, meaning you can do different sides. But it's basically you're going to know the story from that perspective throughout the entire season. So if you choose Drifter, you're going to see the Drifter's perspective throughout the entire DLC. If you choose the Vanguard, you're going to see the Vanguard's perception throughout the entire DLC. Personally, I'm going to choose Drifter, and I think most people are going to choose Drifter because they want to know what's going on with, like, the Shadows of Yore and the Agents of the Nine and the Emissary and Zur and all of that. Speaking of Zur, happy days, happy days. Zur is finally selling Forsaken Exotics. Thank you, God. So typically, I don't play till the weekends. So this is great for me because every time Zur is there when I start playing... So if he starts selling Forsaken Exotics now, I can finally catch up, get what I need to get. Unfortunately, that's probably going to be like two weapons, maybe three. Because I don't really know if you can get Lord of Wolves beside, uh, like from anything else but bounties. I think it kind of has to be a bounty. But like you can't buy Lay Monarch, I believe. Because you have to get from a powerful weapon frame. I think the same thing with Jotun. You're not going to be able to get any of those anyway. Because those are Black Armory. But anything Forsaken, that's not a quest you can get. The sad thing is, most of the weapons are quests. So I feel like the only thing I can really get is... Actually, not even from Zer. I can't even get Wave Splitter. Because that's PlayStation exclusive. I am on PlayStation, but Zer won't sell that until everyone has it. So actually, the only thing I can really get is Cerberus Plus One. And a bunch of the armor. That's really it. If you think about it, which is kind of unfortunate, but Cerberus Plus One isn't a good weapon. But yeah, there's that. The Zer bounties that people were talking about is now called Invitations of the Nine, and you get powerful gear from it. There's also, for people who are behind, there are power surge bounties that allow you to get to 640 power, basically in under an hour, which is good. I'm bas I'm already there. I am a little bit behind. I am 640, so I don't really need it. Um... If they had a 650 version, I would appreciate that, but I think they don't want to make it too easy for people. So so I can kind of catch up with my friends. But that's basically all the news. I know it was a lot, like a big info dump, and this video is like 13 minutes long. But still, that's basically everything that's happening. We're going to be getting the Thorn, as I said, next week, and the Allegiance Quest. So I'll keep you guys posted on the Thorn. I'll make a video about the Thorn what it can do, the quest, all of that. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and apagando las luces.